Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. A $14 billion route makes HKEX world's worst performing bourse. PBOC steps up yuan support via fixing after Moody's outlook cut. How major US stock indexes fared Tuesday, 12 5, 2023. India stock value tops $4 trillion, narrowing gap with Hong Kong. Yellen says economists eating their words after predicting high US unemployment. A $14 billion route makes HKEX world's worst performing bourse. Bloomberg. PBOC steps up yuan support via fixing after Moody's outlook cut. Bloomberg. China has increased its support for the yuan by setting the daily reference rate at 7.1140 per dollar, a stronger rate than expected, as market sentiment was hit following Moody's downgrade of China's credit outlook. The gap between the reference rate and the average estimate was the largest in over two weeks, indicating that Beijing is making efforts to prevent declines in the currency. Moody's downgraded China's credit outlook to negative on Tuesday, citing increased fiscal stimulus usage and a property market downturn. How major U.S. stock indexes fared Tuesday, 12 5, 2023. Associated Press. India stock value tops $4 trillion, narrowing gap with Hong Kong. Yahoo! India's stock market value reached $4 trillion for the first time on Tuesday, marking a milestone for the country's equity market as it narrows the gap with Hong Kong. The market value of India's exchanges has risen by $1 trillion in less than three years, making it one of the best performers. It is already trading at all-time highs, with key stock benchmarks up more than 13% this year, and on track for an eighth consecutive year of gains. Yellen says economists eating their words after predicting high U.S. unemployment. Reuters. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said that economists who predicted high unemployment would be needed to control inflation are eating their words. Yellen noted that the labor market and consumer demand in the U.S. are showing little weakness, while prices are moderating. She stated that there are no signs of a weakening labor market that would indicate a recession. Yellen's remarks come ahead of the release of the October jobs data which will be closely watched by Federal Reserve policymakers. Chinese experts push back at Moody's for cutting bond outlook. Bloomberg. Chinese experts have criticized Moody's Investors Service for lowering its outlook on China's sovereign bonds. The experts argue that Moody's did not take into consideration the supportive policies the Chinese government has introduced for the property market. The Chinese government has also criticized Moody's for its outlook change, stating that the impact of the property downturn is under control. Chinese state media outlets are also optimistic about domestic stocks in 2024, stating that equities will experience a mild bull market as government policies help the economy. Amazon targets shine with big fee cuts for cheap apparel sellers. Bloomberg. Amazon is cutting fees for merchants selling clothing priced below $20 as it prepares for a potential price war with Chinese fashion brand Shine. The company will reduce seller fees on clothing products priced below $15 to 5% starting in January while fees on clothing priced from $15 to $20 will drop to 10%. The move is unusual for Amazon, which rarely reduces referral fees, and suggests that the company is attempting to attract merchants offering low-cost clothes, an area in which Shine has excelled. Amazon dominates the U.S. e-commerce market, but faces new competition from companies with ties to China, including Shine, which plans to hold an IPO in 2024. China tech fund beating 98% of peers spurns AI stocks on risks. Bloomberg. China's Lushiol Jing Fund, which has returned 76% this year and outperformed 98% of its peers, has warned about the risks associated with investing in artificial intelligence, AI. Yunbing Wang, an investment officer at Qingdao Lushio Investment Management, said there were huge fundamental risks to public safety in AI at this stage. While AI has been a boon for some Chinese companies, Yun compared the current AI frenzy to the euphoria around Chinese private tutoring stocks in early 2021, which lost almost all their value later that year. Australia's Albanese faces immigration heat as house prices soar. Nikkei Asia. 
The Australian government is facing a dilemma as it seeks to address the country's housing market crisis while also needing to attract migrants to fill labour shortages. Net migration in the 12 months through March reached 454,000, double the average over the past decade, which has pushed population growth up 2.2% over the same period. The property market has been heavily impacted by the population surge, with the total value of Australian residential dwellings increasing by 3% to 10.1 trillion Australian dollars, 6.6 trillion dollars. In the last quarter and the mean price of residential dwellings nationally rising 2.7% to 912,700 Australian dollars in the same period. Taiwan wants to push bounds of US trade deal to beat isolation. Bloomberg. Taiwan's trade negotiator, John Deng, has said the country wants to expand its initial trade agreement with the US, known as the US-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade, into a deal that more closely resembles a free trade agreement. Deng said that one goal is to expand the areas covered by the agreement, including agriculture and labor, and to address market access issues such as tariffs. Deng also said that Taiwan should consider forming a network of bilateral free trade deals as it may struggle to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership due to Chinese objections. Miley appoints Santiago Basili as Argentina Central Bank Chief. Bloomberg. Argentina's president-elect, Javier Miley, has chosen Santiago Basili as the head of the nation's central bank. Basili, a close friend of incoming economy minister Luis Caputo, will be responsible for finding a solution for Argentina's local currency debt, lifting currency controls, and potentially introducing the dollar as an alternative to the peso in the future. The appointment, which still needs to be approved by the Senate, expands the powers of the economic team that Caputo is assembling to implement austerity measures and combat inflation. Air New Zealand to fly Amazon-backed electric plane in 2026. Bloomberg. Air New Zealand has ordered an electric plane from Beta Technologies with plans to operate commercial flights with cleaner, next-generation aircraft in just over two years. The battery-powered plane has flown as far as 500 kilometers in tests and Air New Zealand plans to use it for short cargo flights in 2026. This move is part of the global aviation industry's efforts to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. While electric planes are a viable option for reducing emissions on shorter trips, they are not yet suitable for long-haul flights. Air New Zealand has options to buy two more of the Alia aircraft from Beta Technologies, with the potential to purchase a further 20. Taiwan's Big China ETF bust shows extent of financial decoupling. Bloomberg. Taiwan's economic and financial decoupling from China has deepened with the near collapse of the world's largest Chinese bond ETF market. Local ETFs that track Chinese bonds have seen their assets under management plunge more than 94% from a peak of over 180 billion new Taiwan dollars, 58 billion dollars, in 2019. The cratering value of those ETFs echoes the broader investment landscape, in which global funds have fled China's bond market due to the nation's vast yield differential with the US. Taiwanese banks have been reducing their exposure to China for the past 10 quarters and the country's direct investment into China has fallen almost 40% this year. The Kremlin says more foreign companies are failing than delivering on their promises to leave Russia. Here's what the data shows. Yahoo! Over 1,000 foreign companies announced they would exit Russia in protest against the war after Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022. However, the Russian government has said many of those companies haven't made good on their word. According to Yale University's data, 552 foreign companies are still operating in Russia. This number includes those whose operations are running under a business-as-usual approach and those who have curtailed their investments and operations significantly. Meanwhile, another 502 companies have wound down most, if not all, of their operations in Russia while keeping return options open, according to Yale's list. In total, 535 companies have made a clean break with the Russian market. The Kiev School of Economics also examined company operations in Russia, with its data showing that most foreign companies have not left Russia. According to the data, 1,582 companies continue to operate in Russia, and just under 300 have made a full exit from Russia since it invaded Ukraine. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. 
These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.